I did some PC archaeology the other day back in my family's house in an old barn or what you would call it, an old house with, uh, where I've been storing some old stuff. And I found these ancient computers. These two are my workhorses from the mid 90s. I think this is 1995, this one. It used to be running Windows 95 and now it's running Windows 98. And uh, it's been standing there literally, was it 16, 17 years in the cold. So I, I was not expecting them to work. So I just plugged them in here on the floor and fired them up. I also, this is a bit fun. You had to find an old keyboard with this five pin DIN style connector. And also you need to get a mouse. You need one of these. You cannot even use the PS2 ones. These ones, they weren't around at this time. And you can definitely not use USB because that was as hadn't been invented either back in those days. This one is a couple of years newer, so it's it's got USB ports, which makes things a little bit simpler. However, I found some files on this one, which I would really like to extract. But when you've got no USB ports, it's a bit of a challenge to get the files from this one. And uh, one option is always to just take the IDE hard drive out and connect it to a modern computer with a perhaps with a USB caddy. I have one of those which you can use to extract files from old computers, but I'd I'd rather just leave this one as it is. I don't want to open up and it's uh, actually when it's been standing still for so long and uh, perhaps uh, you could even damage the hard drive by removing the cable because the soldering's might be come off. I've seen that happen with uh, some other of my hard drives, so I'm a bit careful with that nowadays. So the the what I come up with that the, should work. It it's got a LAN card here with a with a modern connector as well. Thanks for that. So I think I could connect this one to a local area network and uh, to some other of my computers and perhaps create a network file share and dump the files there that I would like to extract and. Uh, you know, that's like sentimental stuff, some pictures and uh, those kind of things that you can't really find them anywhere else. And uh, that would it would be fun to get them out before this one dies completely. Because uh, I guess it's it's expended most of its nine lives by now, I guess, sitting in <laughs> below zero temperatures for 16, 7 winters. <laughs> it's, that's tough. It's got a tough life, but it really just started up as as it was yesterday. I'm quite impressed. Anyways, a local area network, create a fight share, and I should be able to extract the things from this one that I would want. And that should work. However, I think also I should be very careful about going online with this one. I think it's perhaps better to keep it at, on, on an offline network because if you haven't had security updates for like two decades, it's probably gonna be infected by all kinds of viruses and nasty stuff in in seconds, perhaps. I, I don't know. So I'll be a bit careful with that. And it's not like you can do anything with it online anyway, because you, can, you can't even surf the web with a computer that is this old. It's, uh, I think it's, it's a Pentium 100 megahertz. It's actually a monster. It's got 64 megabytes of RAM. That's like maxed out in a computer from 1995. So it's a monster. But uh, 64 megs is not that much. It's a bit on the small side today. So we'll see how it goes with this. I guess it's, it could be called an arch computer archaeological excavation to see what kind of files I can extract from this one. Although it's, uh, it's also quite cool that many of these standards have been around for so long that you can actually connect one of these ancient machines to a modern computer and transfer the files. Pretty, pretty neat. And then we have this old beast as well. So this one's gonna be fun to start up as well and see. It, it did start, I tried it once, but here, here's here's the cool, it's got the 3DFX cards here with the Voodoo 2. So this is a gaming monster from, from the later part of the 1990, 90, 98, I think this one is from, a really old one. So actually most of this stuff has gone on the, uh, as e-waste uh, in a landfill somewhere by now. But uh, I noticed on eBay that the prices of, of these retro computers are actually 
climbing quite steadily. And I guess it's collectors and nerds like me <laughs> who want to relive their childhood memories or something. And, and they, they buy these things for outrageous prices. Couldn't get uh, a couple of thousand Swedish perhaps for these two old machines. Oh well. Another cool thing that I noted when I started them is that the sound, you know that floppy drive sound and stuff, could perhaps do another video in the future and record those sounds because there's like, you haven't heard those in a long time, the floppy disk drive seeking and, and all that stuff and the fans whining and the hard drives are so loud. It's like someone is play, playing the maracas inside the computer. So we've come a long way. We've definitely come a long way. See ya.